get started. As a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. We have a mic in the room, so please ensure you're using the mic each time you ask a question. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for the questions. We will address questions in the room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Now we're going to start with questions for the players and hold questions for the coach until the end. Alexis, you've been asked this a million times, but you're a hometown kid kind of living her dream. You know, how does it feel to be here in this moment, you know, knowing, uh, you know, growing up in Lincoln and seeing the Huskers and, and all of that? Yeah, it's super special. I mean, I remember watching um, the 2013 team um, go to this, I think it was the Sweet 16, and wanting to do that and um, wanting to be a part of this Husker program. And now that I'm doing it, it just um, doesn't feel real sometimes. And um, I just love playing for my home state and this program and Coach Williams and um, playing with um, just these amazing teammates that I have. It's a lot of fun. Just one other question. You know, you're going to go up against another really good post player in Reagan Beers tomorrow, probably. Um, kind of tell me about what you know about her game and how the two of your games kind of compare to each other. Yeah, I'm really excited. This is what it's about, playing the best uh, players in the country, and I'm really excited to go up against Reagan. She's a really talented player, really physical, um, finishes really well, well around the rim, a really good offensive rebounder. So I'm excited uh, for that matchup. Jazzy obviously have some experience in this building. Um, we knew it was a possibility you'd see Oregon State, but now that you're facing him, just kind of what do you remember about this building and what are you expecting? Yeah, uh, Oregon State are a really high IQ team, really well coached team. Um, they have an insane big that Lex is about to go up against that um, we just looked at some film this morning. So they have a really good balance of uh, plays on and off the bench. So uh, we're excited for the matchup. Uh, Coach, this team obviously has a lot of uh, a lot of role players that can go off on any given night. Kind of, what does that do in, in terms of scouting and, and what, what impresses you about this Beaver team? Is it all right for me to take that you now? You can take or? that one and okay. we'll, we'll oh, do the rest was, of the coach ones at the end. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, happy to, I'm happy to answer. I'm happy to answer now. I know the last time I answered and it was supposed to be student athletes only, so I don't know. But if it's, if it's uh, okay, I'll. I'll answer. Um, yeah, I mean, what a what an outstanding and balanced attack, and and they have um, Oregon State has so many players that can really come in and and contribute and really um, make a huge impact for um, for their team. So I think um, you know we're 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 fortunate that we play against some teams like that in our in our conference and so we know like okay there's lots of weapons here and it's going to take a full and complete team effort really high iq and disciplined um, defensive intensity for 40 minutes in order to give ourselves a chance but um but i think you know we've been quite impressed the more we've been able to study and learn uh this team they're a really good passing team and uh, because they have such great passers, uh, I think that's why you know their post players are so dangerous and their shooters are so dangerous and they can kill you in transition and they can inside outside you to death and they play off ball screen action and it doesn't matter how you defend their ball screens, they're gonna find a way to attack that. And so, uh, so it's gonna take a, a special defensive focus for our team. As you said, Reagan Beers was insane. In what, in what ways is she insane? Yeah, I think her ability to be able to pass out of the post. She always makes really good reads. She's super efficient. She uses her body really well and has really good timing. She also sets really good ball screens. Um, we talked about if you set a good ball screen, you're able, normally most of the time you get the shot off of it. So she's pretty good at that as well. Austin Norman, 93.7, the ticket. Alexis, you had 11 players see the floor yesterday, second game in three days tomorrow. How key was the depth in uh, yesterday's win for tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's been really key this whole season and to get us to this point. Uh, we have people step up. Uh, different players step up at different opportunities, different moments, and I think that's what helped us make a run in the Big Ten tournament was just uh, having that depth and playing um, everyone on our roster, and um, I think it's going to be key for us uh, again tomorrow. So, Brennan Green, Coin6. Jazz, 
you know, you know when you get this draw, it's a possibility that you're going to go up against Oregon State. You see that, but just having it all be here, considering your history in this state, does it does it feel a little surreal to have have your career going through this right now? Yeah, it's a little bit of a full circle moment for me. Um, when the itinerary came out to say we're going to fly from Lincoln to Eugene, I was like, well, that sounds a little familiar. So um, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to. Uh, play here and hopefully my season doesn't end here, but it's a pretty cool feeling to be back in this state. Hey Jazz, Ron Callen with Learfield. Uh, what, uh, uh, have you crossed paths much with Kelsey Reese over your college career and is there a kinship amongst Australian players who play college basketball in the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, I went to a couple of camps with Kelsey. She's a little bit younger than I am. I have more of a relationship with her older sister, Darcy. Um, all Australians kind of are in support of each other when we're over here in the U.S., so it's pretty cool that there's a lot of Australians on most teams now. So we're all in support of each other, and it's going to be cool to see a familiar face. And take you back to 2021, Jazz, in Eugene, Beavers, Ducks, and nobody was in the stands because yep. <laughs> it wasn't allowed. Do you remember that? I think it might have been your last game against the Beavers. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about that day? Um, that was a little while ago now. I just remember that whole season was kind of crazy. We are just having cardboard cutouts and um, that sound that they tried to put on, like a fake crowd. It was kind of <laughs> – it was a crazy time. Um, and it's pretty cool to be able to play in March Madness with the March Madness logo, and it's really cool to be able to have – probably a sellout crowd tomorrow. Um, the fans and everything, it's really nice to have everyone back. Uh, the three freshman guards for Oregon State, Donovan, Kennedy, and then Dom Perova, what are your thoughts about that trio? Yeah, they're really talented as well. It's pretty cool to see across the nation the freshmen that are incoming right now. Um, we have pretty good, three pretty good freshmen as well, so um, I'm really excited to see the future, and it's only going to rise for women's sports. Ron and Clark came to uh, For either players, you know, obviously the tournament style is not something very new to you guys, but just how taxing that game was last night, how quickly or what is sort of the key for players to sort of flush that game and get on to the next? Yeah, and that's the thing. I think we need to flush that game. We probably didn't play our best, um, and this is a completely different team, so we're excited to shift our focus. We're very fortunate to have that Big Ten tournament where we played four games in four days, so we're pretty good at trying to flush things and move on to the next. Um, our team's pretty disciplined with that. Lex, uh, go back to that Big Ten title game in Minneapolis. Uh, what do you remember about that experience of playing in front of 16,000 fans and, and a lot of Iowa fans, part of that? Yeah, um, you know, we had played Iowa twice that year, or twice this season, so um, pretty familiar with the Iowa crowd and the fans. So when we were in that title game, I felt like we were really prepared um, to just have kind of people rooting against us, and we really kind of try to use that to our advantage. We like being the underdogs, and I feel like this is kind of a similar situation. Um, Oregon State has really um, a solid fan base, so um, just being in that position earlier this year and now, I'm having another opportunity. Um, I'm excited, and uh, we really do like being on their dog. So, do you prefer? I mean, this could, you know, you're obviously on in their their gym. Do you prefer just have playing in front of people? I mean, instead of a neutral, smaller neutral crowd. I mean, do you like the energy of a crowd, even if it's not if it's against you? I really enjoy it. Um, I love playing in front of a huge crowd, even if they're rooting against you. Um, it's fun. Um, I feel like that's what March is all about. Just having fun and having people watch and um, really enjoy watching uh, college women's basketball, so. Alexis, you had a really good tournament run personally. Um, do you feel like you're kind of hitting your stride right now in the postseason? Yeah, I feel like our team just really like at our peak right now. Um, I think it's all coming together. Uh, we're all really trusting each other, relying on each other, uh, using each other in the right way. I feel like we always find the open person we're always willing to make that extra pass and um, I feel like my team really trusts me and um, want to give me the ball in those big moments and I have the confidence in myself and my coaches and teammates have confidence in me and um, I just feel like we're playing really confident together right now. Kevin Derby KZI, I'm going to behave this time, don't worry. <laughs> uh, Jazz, specifically about Scott Ruick, you have you know plenty of games with him. They've He's been such a consistent coach, and they've gone through such an impressive turnaround over the last year. Just kind of what observations have you taken from Scott over the years, and what makes him such a successful coach here? Yeah, I think he's a really smart coach. I had the opportunity to meet him through my um, recruiting process, and he met my family. We have a lot of respect for him and this program. 
Um, he's just really smart, um, being able to use his plays in the right way. Um, I think you can see that players stick around and even when they're not performing, he's able to have a quick turnaround and try and develop plays. He develops bigs really well um, and that's pretty cool. I think he's just an all-round smart coach. Any other questions for the players? No? You guys are good to go to the locker room. Thank you, Thank you so much. Now we can open it up to questions for Coach Williams. Same question, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing better now. Uh, same question, um, Scott Ruick. Just what are your impressions of him and what makes him so successful here at Oregon State? Uh, he's a smart coach. I think Jazz nailed it. I think he does an outstanding job of, of building a roster that really complements each other very well. He... Um, he recruits a lot of the same type of players that we like to recruit at, at Nebraska. So, um, you know, I just I think his staff does an outstanding job of of recruiting and building their roster first, and that's kind of the first step to being a quality um, program and coach. And then um, and then once you've put together and pieced together your team, being able to max them out and and find a way to have every player um, playing to their strengths and he does a great job of that. I think he just does a great job of finding um, mismatch opportunities and really trying to exploit those and getting their players. They don't beat themselves. You know, their team just does not beat themselves. They, they really play smart basketball and, and play to their strengths. And so I think that's a special and unique talent for, um, for a coach to be able to consistently be able to do that. Um. Obviously, without disposing too much, but uh, Reagan Bears, I'm sure, will be an emphasis of defense for you guys. What are some of the different ways you've seen teams defend her, and what do you feel like are some of the better ways? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the more games you watch, the more everybody's trying to throw the kitchen sink, right? And and uh, it seems like everybody's tried every type of coverage that you can think of and um, double teams. That's what um, the depth on their roster just provides because she's such a great passer out of the post if you try to throw quick double teams she can really make you pay by just finding the open player they've got enough shooters around her to make you pay um, but she's just so smart with her positioning and so um, if you try to go over cross screens then she's just going to wait till the pass next pass and seal you out and if you try to go under you know she'll just bury you deep and um, so I think she's been really um, coached well and um, she's she's very coachable uh, to know and understand her strengths and to find ways to play to those and and so um, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to you know potentially mix some things up throughout the game and not just be consistent with one way where she can um, get used to uh, how we're defending as a coach how do you sort of you know coach in this tournament style where you do have that high emotion game coming down to the last basic possession last night and now you have another challenge tomorrow. How do you coach that up to your players and you know allow them to be able to flush this game? Yeah, I think the the big thing for us is just, you know, it kind of feels like unique that we have a day off in between because, you know, we just came off a tournament where we played four games in four days and it just, you know, it was you didn't even have that day to really kind of catch your breath and refocus and you know get a practice in and you know that kind of so um, for us this feels a little bit like a luxury just to to kind of have a, a day here to to kind of re regroup and refocus and um, shift because um, the style of play that we played yesterday is incredibly stark contrast to what we will see tomorrow. I just feel like two very different teams, two very different style of play. So um, for us to have this precious practice time today um, to, to kind of shift our focus and, and, um, and hopefully uh, get back to being a little bit crisper and sharper ourselves. Coach, in terms of that style or the personnel, does Oregon State remind you of anyone you faced either earlier this year in previous seasons? <laughs> we tried to we tried to figure that out kind of um, uh, earlier. My coaching staff, we, we said maybe closest thing like Indiana, uh, one of our, our teams in our league that's physical and 
um, tough, maybe not quite as big size-wise as what Oregon State has, but lots of capable shooters around the perimeter, very prominent uh, post presence inside, physical defensively, um, just, you know, is, pr is probably the closest thing we could, we could think of. Coach, in terms of this Beaver character, Scott has repeatedly said that this is a team that just doesn't seem to be mentally phased by getting hit by a run or being down big in the fourth quarter. They seem to always fight back no matter what they're up against. So I know, you know, going deep into the tournament, you're going to face teams like that every night. But what's unique about this particular group? And how do you kind of message the focus of staying focused even if you go on a big run or you get up big late in the game? Um, yeah, I think we've just got lots of experience of it. <laughs> so uh, we, we spent a lot of time talking um, before yesterday's game about just the journey that our team has been on this year. And um, we've had some, some just incredible wins. And when I think back to our win over Iowa at home, and it was uh, we took some punches in that game, and we were just ready to punch right back, and and made some huge plays to down the stretch, and and you know we, it taught us a lot about ourselves, about that resiliency, and and um, you know we've also had some opportunities, some tough losses, and and one that really stands out to me is when we when we lost to Rutgers at home, and it was a one point loss at home, and um, we had plenty of opportunities down the stretch to really get over the hump. Or execute and uh, we couldn't quite um, make that game winning play and we learned just as much from that game um, as we maybe probably did the Iowa game but uh, this season this journey has taught us a lot of lessons and brought us to the team that we are right now and it's those th those uh, experiences that we're incredibly grateful for and that we're going to lean heavily on um, as we continue this journey together. Hey coach um Last night's game, they held Eastern to a season low offensively. They've done it earlier in the season against Utah and Colorado. What about the Beaver defense? Uh, what are your thoughts about that, and how do you approach it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I kind of touched on it a little earlier. Like, they just they don't beat themselves. You know, they, they don't make mistakes. They're very, very wise about it. You know, I think they have good um, – pressure from their guards that can cause you to be disrupting but then great size that um, that makes things challenging in the paint and so um, for us we really try to emphasize you know paint touches and finding ways to get paint touches they make that very very hard for uh, teams and so I think that is where it all starts with their defense and just um, being super solid defensively making you take tough contested shots on every possession. Lots to talk about Reagan Beers and justifiably so, but what about Tamia Gardner, who's got such size and her her release is so quick? How do you deal with her? Yeah, well, um, fairly unique as I got to see her play a lot in high school because we signed Maggie Mendelson um, to come play basketball and volleyball at Nebraska, and they were high school teammates, and and um, you know, but. Um, just watching the way that she has continued to just progress as a college player and so dangerous because of how quick her release is. I think obviously we've played against uh, forwards before that were pretty good three-point shooters, but the way that she can get her feet set and her shot off so quickly, just um, great size and uh, and outstanding skill from that position. She's just so versatile. And so I think that's what makes her special and dangerous. And um, they do a great job of running really good actions to take advantage of what she's good at. And so, um, you know, she's scary. She can play the three. She could play the four. She could play the five and really be effective at all of those and cause nightmares for anybody that's trying to defend in any of those positions. And so I think um, just such an outstanding um, complimentary player that obviously – Sixth woman of the year in this league is is pretty tough, but um, but if they needed her to step into the starting lineup at the five when Reagan Beers is out, she's pretty effective there too. So, um, just a special, versatile player that can plug in in a lot of places. Coach, you mentioned paint touches, two really good post players in Alexis and Natalie, but also some guards that can get to the basket pretty well too. How do you balance the back to the basket ability of your posts with 
uh, their stretchability and giving your guards room to operate in the paint as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one thing that um, is is um, positive for our team is that we do have um, post players that can be threats from behind the arc and so that uh, they can be effective. And so our ability to be able to utilize that at times and open things up and and um, and force you know defenses to, to stretch out a little bit is something that we can play to and have this season. Um, you know, but we want to really continue to stay balanced with what we do well. And um, the paint touches for us is a non-negotiable. And some of that has to be our posts with their back to the basket. And some of that will be our guards really trying to get in there. But um, balance is what makes us the best. Are there any last questions for Coach Williams? No? Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.baritone.com.
Ready? Okay, let's get started. Um, as a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. We have a mic in the room, so please ensure you're using the mic each time you ask a question. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for the questions. We will address questions in the room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Now, any questions for Talia and Tamia? Uh, Nick Daschle from the Oregonian. Um, Talia, I was wondering, um, with Talia Goodman coming back, coach, you played with her. What, what has that dynamic been like for you to have played with somebody and then have her be your coach as well? Yeah, I think the dynamic is super similar to when I played with her just because I was still kind of in high school or it was my senior year um, and she was a senior in college, kind of the leader of that team. So she was a coach to me um, when I was her teammate in many ways. So I think the dynamic is, is really similar and we still have a great relationship. So it's been super cool to have a coach that you know understands what you're going through and can relate and has been in the same position in same situations. Um, it just brings a whole another level of um, closeness in that relationship. So it's been amazing having her as a coach. Brenda Green, Coin Six. Talia, just how did it feel going out last night and just being able to make the statement that your team was able to make? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I thought our defense was phenomenal. Um, we executed our scout really well. And then obviously um, it was huge for one of our freshmen to have a big night like that. Um, I was super happy for her and just kind of shows that even though we are a young group coming into this tournament, um, you could talk about our inexperience, but we don't play that way. And um, so I think it's just a sign of uh, great things to come and that we're ready for this tournament, <coughs> excuse me, regardless of, um, you know, if we've been here before or not. Austin Norman, 93.7, the ticket. Uh, to me, uh, you guys were able to put it in cruise control really from like halfway point of the third quarter on. How nice was it to be able to save legs for some of your players that play a lot of minutes for your second game in three days tomorrow? Yeah, I feel like everyone contributed um, in the game yesterday. I'm super proud of how we played. Um, and that's the thing about our team is anybody can step, step up on any given night. And so um, it was really fun yesterday, and we're super excited for what's next. For both of you, just first impressions of Nebraska. What, what have you guys been keying in on so far? Yeah, we know that they're a really good team, obviously. Um, they can shoot the three, and they have a really good post presence inside. And so um, we just know that if we play our game, we'll be just fine. Um, and we just key in on scout and do our own thing. Yeah, I think um, they have some veteran players that have been playing a long time and, and played in, in tournaments like this and um, players that, that want big moments. So it's definitely going to be a challenge for us and um, a really good post that can finish and they play really fast, so um, nothing we haven't seen before. Um, all the stuff that, that we go over in the scout is kind of just review. Um, I think the Pac-12 has prepared us for, for teams like this, so we're just excited for the opportunity. I guess just following up on that, who do they remind you then in, uh, of in the Pac-12? Um, yeah, I think Utah, just the way they, they get out and run. They kind of have shooters everywhere. Um, and then I think defensively they're a bit similar to Arizona. They like to get out and hedge ball screens. Um, but kind of just different aspects are um, things that we've seen in teams throughout the Pac-12. Um, and, you know, over the course of the regular season, different teams show different looks. So I think at this point we've, we've kind of seen everything. Um, and so it might just be a different, different combination of looks, but all stuff that we've seen before. For both of you. Uh, less Garrett Kowalskis at times. Um, what's the emotion after winning a first round match, a uh, first round game? What's the emotion in the locker room? We're really excited. I mean, um, but obviously on to the next. Um, we celebrated yesterday as a team, and then um, you know we got to make sure we go on to the next moment because we play a really tough team on Sunday tomorrow. So um, obviously we kind of have to ha have to have that mentality of on to the next, on to the next, and take care of business. So. Are there any other questions? No? Talia, Tamia, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Go Beefs. Go Beefs.
great question. Um, well, like any matchup this time of year, it's tough. You know, um, I really like their team. It's been fun watching them a little bit. I, I'll be honest, I spent most of my time with Eastern Washington this week to this point, or until last night's game was over. Um, you know, but Nebraska, I've watched them through the season. And, you know, I watched their Iowa game a couple weeks ago and, you know, just really impressed by how hard they play, how fast they play, um, the intensity, and then their skill. I mean, they're, you know, they are a very good basketball team. They have inside out. Um, they, they buy into the defensive end and they rebound like crazy, you know. So um, it should be a great game. Uh, Nick Dashel with the Oregonian. Um, in regard to Aaliyah coming back to Oregon State on you know, the staff, how did how did you know she was ready, and what what has she added to the team this year? Uh, that's an awesome question. Um, Aaliyah, perfect person, perfect time. I mean, that's that's just kind of how it has felt. You know, it's it's really interesting how the timing worked. Um, you know, she was available. We had need, and we have young point guards. You know, and so it's been. She was a perfect piece to the puzzle this year. Um, when did I know she was ready? Uh, when she was a freshman in high school. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not actually kidding. I mean, when the first time I really studied her, um, they played the state championship game here in Gill Coliseum, uh, LaSalle High School, and Aaliyah was their freshman point guard. And early fourth quarter, mid fourth quarter, I think the game was tied, and I was sitting in the front row behind their bench, and she came over to her head coach. Her dad was the assistant at the time. and. Um, but she came over to the head coach and said, I think we need to run this. We need to run this. You know, and I was thinking to myself, man, I've got Sydney Weiss as in her sophomore year in college, and, and Sid's not suggesting plays to me yet. Um, you know, and, and here's Aaliyah as a freshman with that poise and that presence and that mind. Um, you know, so then through four years of you know, living this experience with her as, as a point guard and, and having her play you know, significant minutes all four years and then obviously being one of the best point guards in the, in the nation her senior year, um, you know, you, you, you speak the, end up speaking the same language, you know, and, and so that cohesiveness is so valuable to us. And so the phrases, the terminology, um, the, the way her mind works with mine, um, you know, just it's just a real nice compliment. Um, she adds another layer to everything we do. And then, you know, her ability to relate to our team is invaluable, you know, right now and bringing you know, helping bring these point guards along this year and encourage them, you know, as they're adapting. I think Aaliyah's played a really key, a key role, a key role in, in their development this year. It's been awesome. Ronald Clark, KMTR. Uh, Scott, obviously, it, it seems like it's been forever ago now, but you've obviously played it, had your teams play against Jazz Shelley. What do you remember about her play and how she developed over those years? Um, well, I... I remember lots about Jazz from from watching her, you know, through the recruiting process. Um, I did a home visit with her, you know. I've been to her house, um, you know. We got to know her family really well, and and then, you know, as an opponent at Oregon, and and now here we are, you know, again all these years later. Um, you know, I just am uh, always been impressed with her as a competitor. Um, I like her. Uh, she's a cool person. Uh, she's. I loved her savviness. You know, I mean, uh, we just got done talking about Aaliyah Goodman, you know, for us, and, you know, one of the smartest, savviest players I've coached. And Jazz is like that. That's who she is. Um, she in the previously wouldn't fill up a stat sheet. Um, you know, I'd watch her play for Australia, and, and yet she was the one making the plays. And then, you know, when they needed her to play big, uh, she, I think she put 25 on the U.S., um, you know, in a game. And all of a sudden, she rose to a level that nobody had seen. But if you studied her game, it didn't surprise you. You know, she was the one that made the key defensive play, um, that got the key assist, or would rise and hit the big shot, even though she wasn't a primary shooter, you know, on their team. And, and so she um, played in a complementary role, I would say, at Oregon, um, you know, through her time there, and then now is back in that primary role. So for me, it's, it's fun to watch her, you know, step up into that scoring role and see her be so aggressive because that's who she can be. And that's what we all want for, for all these athletes. You know, we want them to see themselves. And, you know, it's competition, yes, but it's growth and it's, you know, just development, you know, for the human. And so it's fun for me to watch her just really rise into not only a leadership role, you know, um, running the team, but also a primary scoring role. And, and so I'm really happy for her and have a ton of respect for her. Cameron Irving, KZI. Scott, your players make comparisons of Nebraska to Utah. What do you make of that comparison, and what do you think you learned about yourselves out of those Utah games that you can take into this? 
Yeah, I, th I mean, you know, you got Peely down there, you got shooters everywhere, and they play super fast, and they're they're capable of putting up a ton of points, and they play really hard. I mean, that's Utah. Um, you know, so I think that's a valid uh, comparison. You know, I mean, um, what we learned was that, you know, we could take it to another level. You know, I think both those games were uh, breakthrough games for us. Um, we knew we'd already experienced success um, before both of those games, but but both the Utah games, we leveled up. Um, you know, I mean, the game here might have been the best game we played all year. Uh, you know, for three quarters anyway, it was near flawless. Um, you know, and I just I loved our defensive intensity. I think that's that was really what stood out to me. Um, aggressive offense comes from great defense, in my opinion, and and so Utah brought that out of us. And then on the road, um, that was the first time we really put it on someone on their home floor. You know, and that that was a uh, big time performance, you know. So, of course, you know, we would love to see the same tomorrow, but we've got a, a ton of respect for this team. Uh, Nick Townsville from the Oregonian. Um, Scott, you, they're, obviously they're one of the better three-point shooting teams, or at least they shoot a lot mm -hmm. of teams you've, you've played this year. Over your career, you, you guys have defended the three pretty well. What are some of the – I mean, how do you get a team to, to defend the three, and what are some of the things that you – feel like you guys do well to, to make that happen? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot scout specific. Um, you know, we've been real, really blessed to have a lot of great defensive centers. And when you have a great defensive center, uh, you don't need to double, you know, and I think threes come a lot of times from, you know, being compromised in other ways defensively. So that will be interesting tomorrow, you know, to see um, how will our ability to slow Markowski down Will we be able to one on one? Um, will we need to send to? Will we need? Will we need to? Who knows what we'll need to do? So that's one of the things that you know we've been really good at over the years is being able to to be in single coverage. That means you can stay home everywhere else. And um, another thing that that we prioritize is defensive transition. And if you look at really good teams that get a lot of threes up, a lot of them are early in the clock. You know, and so get a rebound get a kick out, kick ahead, no dribble sometimes, and a three's up. And certainly Nebraska is very comfortable, you know, with that. Um, they look for that. And so, um, you know, it'll take a very focused effort. Uh, the comparison to Utah we just talked about, uh, that's what they do, you know. And so uh, we held them to 44 points on their home floor, you know. And so that will be um, it's who we are. And, and so it will be a big part of tomorrow's game is can we control the tempo like that, knowing they want to play so fast. A tournament like this, Coach, and the opponent you haven't seen before, how and it's just a two-day turnaround, how much goes into it that scout when you practice versus just make doing making yourself better at what you do? Yeah, first off, it, it's just refreshing to get in a tournament and see somebody different after, you know, 10 straight weeks of the same grind. Um, uh, we are a scout-specific program and team. Uh, we have terminology that allows us to adjust on the fly, you know, and, and so uh, we just need a day. That's all we, a day and a, a practice and a shoot around, um, you know, to put in different looks or to skew what we're going to do to whoever it is. And so uh, this seems to me and feels like a, a normal conference game. Cameron Derby, KZI. Uh, Donovan Hunter and Kennedy Schuler used to play against each other in the 6A tournament in high school. Uh, this weekend, win or lose, they'll play their last game as freshmen at Gill Coliseum as part of a pretty important freshman class. Can you just kind of reflect on watching them go from being competitors to teammates and what their relationship with each other has been like this year? Yeah, it, it's been uh, really neat to see, you know, what was somewhat of a rivalry, even in the AAU circuit in the summer. You know, they were on rival teams, um, not on the same circuit, but they they would match up because they were both on great teams that wanted to play against great competition and and uh, both playing the same position. You know, there was there was a lot of talk about that. Can they coexist together and all those things? And then you find out, oh, they're actually becoming great friends. Uh, they're roommates. Um, you know, all, all those things. There's there was a great level of respect before. Um, you know, but then it turned into friendship. You know, and and so it's been a one of the cool stories of the year for us is we've got a freshman point guard out there most of the game. Uh, you know, last night Talia played there a little bit, Marta played a little bit, but it was usually, you know, Dono and Kennedy, and it has been that throughout the year. And, and so I think they make each other better, for sure. There's there's a cool competitive thing, and that's what this whole 
team has, by the way, throughout our roster. It's one of the things that's made us grow so quickly. Um, and then the teams just rallied around them and encouraged them and, ex and invited them in and accept them, accepted them and, and just, you know, expects them to play and to perform. And, and they've done that, you know. So it's been a, one of the probably cooler stories of the year for us is having, and especially for lo us local people, to have two Oregonians, you know, play such a significant part in our success and our team this year. And so uh, I've been dreamy. Um, hi, Scott. Um, yeah. Annie Peterson from Associated Press. Going down memory lane a little bit, when you inherited this program, you had open tryouts um, because you didn't have any players. And I'm curious about what lessons you learned from those challenges that you still use today. Hmm. I thought this was the first year people had open tryouts. It happened before? I thought, I don't, I thought it was just a... Um, yeah, so July two th or August 2010, um, you know, we we're trying to fill a roster, and, and we had uh, one returner ended up being two returners, and then four scholarship players. Um, I think it ended up being five scholarship players, and then open tryouts where 55 women showed up. Um, we took four or five from that and built our team. I added a soccer player and a volleyball player, and that was us year one. And um, so looking back on that. Um, what I had not had a losing season before as a, as a head coach. And so that year, I learned that the scoreboard's a liar. Um, that's what I remember learning. I, I'm like, okay, if I, I'm going to go crazy. And losing was miserable, even though you're supposed to, and you, it was inevitable most nights. Um, but that team is still talked about as one of the most inspiring teams that we've ever had. And, um, I mean, Carol Mankin. Our legend, um, our, our Olympian, says that. She goes, that team, was, that team played harder than any team that's ever played at Oregon State. And so I learned that it's not about ultimately the win or the loss. It's about how you play. And I learned as a coach to focus on successes that had nothing to do with the scoreboard. Because it, that would, we will, it just wouldn't have worked. It's like, we boxed out better. We took care of the ball better. We played hard, um, you know, more consistently, that type of thing. And so then, um, you know, you just learn to enjoy the journey. And then it did teach me to really appreciate wins, you know, when they come and the blessings of them, you know. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. So resilience, toughness, um, and certainly it motivated us to recruit really hard and, and uh, get to a point where, you know, we could win um, more often. But uh, the Oregon win that year? was one of the greatest things I've ever been a part of to this day, and, and I still have the ball in my office um, and the box score in my office, you know? And so that, that story um, and that team was the foundation because that 2012 recruiting class that went to a Final Four their senior year learned about our culture that year and committed to us, you know, um, after, after that season. So, yeah, that was memory lane, but that was fun. Thanks for asking. In your opinion, is there any advantage to, you know, coming off a game where it's a little bit less emotionally ta taxing compared to, you know, what Nebraska went through last night coming down to that last possession? Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure. I, I think, uh, yeah, I think there's probably a little bit of a benefit to both. You know, I thought, I didn't think anybody on their team had really, I thought they were able to rest people in the game, just the way that it played out, you know, so I don't know, I don't think fatigue will be a factor at all. I think tomorrow's a new day. And then from the sounds of it, obviously, it sounds like Reagan's a full go. How do you guys attack the way that teams defend her? Is it more of a filling out process or is there, you know, a whole idea of this is how they may come at you? Well, I think, you know, at this year, at this point of the year, we've played 30 some games, um, you know, and so we've seen it all and there's nothing they can do that we haven't seen, you know, so then it's just adapting on the fly, and that's where the terminology comes in and the experience together comes in, and, you know, it's nice to have a couple of veteran guards out there a lot of the time, you know, to adapt to that, but by this point, everybody's pretty veteran, you know, so we know if they could do one of three things, really, one of maybe four things, uh, usually one of two things, and so um, we're anticipating both, and then we adapt as we go, take what they give us. We have time for one more question. Uh, Brent Wagner from the Lincoln Journal. 
Uh, if you like your arena up there, what do you what do you like about your arena and the atmosphere when you get a big crowd for a for a big game? I love the arena. Um, and so I went here and I was part of that arena as a student uh, when Gary Payton was playing and it was sold out 10,400 every night and now it's 9,604 uh, capacity. Um, but the, it's intimate. Uh, it's as good of game environment as you can find. Uh, people are close to the court. Uh, it gets hot in there, which I think is uh, charming. <laughs> Um, you know, and it gets really loud in there, you know, and so there's just something about it that uh, everybody comments comments on when they come for the first time. They're, man, what a great atmosphere that was to play in. And what a, you know, I mean, we've had people that play in front of big crowds saying that was the loudest place I've ever played, you know, and, and so Gil is, Gil is special and uh, always has been, and, and uh, we're looking forward to another great environment tomorrow. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at NCAA.